guys, it's Trina, and this is my March wrap-up. The first week of March, I was over on Sarah Ella's channel helping host the cover reveal for her debut novel that is coming out in October, and are you ready to see this cover because it's really gorgeous? I'm going to show you right now. Here it is. It's so pretty. I'm so excited for Sarah Ella. If you don't watch her channel already, definitely check her out. She has a really great segment where she talks about the behind the scene process of getting a book published, how she queried for an agent, how she signed the contract, and yeah, this book is already up on Goodreads if you want to add it to your TBR, and it's already on Amazon for pre-order for ebook and hardcover, and no, this is not sponsored or anything. I just am a really good friend of Sarah Ella, and I really want to read this book myself. I'll put a link to her channel down below in case you want to catch up on that live show or just watch more of Sarah Ella's lovely face. And a few weeks ago, I got to go to a local book festival called See It Fest, and I did get to meet up with four of my booktube friends there, Allie, Megan, Kayla, and Michelle. There will be links to all of their channels down below so that you can watch our collab videos because they were so much fun to make, and I hope that you guys will enjoy watching me make a fool out of myself in some of them. Those are the events I wanted to talk about quickly, so now let's check in with what my TBR for this month was and how I did on that. So I did better this month than last month. I read three of the four books I meant to. I have failed The Darkest Minds two months in a row now, but I am currently reading it, so it's gonna happen, I promise. And now for the books that I did read this month, as always, going from the lowest end of my rating scale to the highest. First of all, I DNF'd four books this month, and instead of talking about four additional books in this wrap-up that would make it way too long, I did want to tell you guys why I DNF'd them, so I made a separate video. Hopefully that's up already. If not, it's coming soon. The lowest rated book that I did finish this month was Miss Mayhem by Rachel Hawkins. This is the second book in the Rebel Bell trilogy, and I gave this one two stars, not because it's terrible trash or anything like that, but because two stars is, it's okay. This book was okay, but it's not very memorable. I can't tell you why the plot of this book needed to happen, and I can't even tell you what actually happened. Maybe it was a case that I just took too long between reading that first book when my interest was really peaked and then picking the second one up, but it definitely felt like a case of second book syndrome when the plot is just doing who knows what just to build a bridge until book three. So I didn't happen to like this one and that is what it is, but I will forever remember Rebel Bell as being a book that impressed me for this genre. I read quite a few three-star rated books this month, and the first of those I'm going to talk about is The Revenant by Michael Punk. This is the book that the movie The Revenant was based on, and I picked this one up because I did like the movie so much. This is based on somewhat true events. There was really a guy named Hugh Glass that was a pioneer fur trapper that did get attacked by a grizzly bear and was left for dead by the rest of his company, and he basically crawled his way across several states to find the guys that left him for dead and to seek his revenge. I really love survival stories, so that's a big reason why I picked this book up. I was really interested in reading about that experience, and the whole aspect of wanting to seek revenge gave it a little extra thrill to the story. But the reason it's no more than three stars is because I just really felt like the writing lacked personality. I really felt like I didn't get to know the characters. It just was kind of a bland storytelling experience. I enjoyed the story that was happening, but not how it was told. The next book that I rated three stars this month was Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. In order to talk about this book, I need to mention a trigger warning. And if you don't want to know anything about this book, go ahead and mute or skip over. I'll put a timestamp down here to where you can skip to. This book is about a young woman named Louisa who loses her job, and the only other job in her small town that she can find is working as a caretaker for a quadriplegic man named Will. Will is quite depressed, and the trigger warning for this book is that this book deals heavily with the desire to undergo assisted suicide. Will does not want to live. And so when Louisa comes into his life, the main plot of this book is that she wants to give him a reason to live. I have heard many readers say they wish they had known that this book deals with the topic of assisted suicide before going in because it's something that they personally just had a really hard time reading about, so that's something to be known. Now this book equally had good and bad things for me. The good things were that I thought the writing was really well done, it really connected me deeply to these characters, there were some heart touching moments, and the book did make you think about things that a typical able-bodied person such as myself may not have to think about in everyday life. The 
book's intention is to make you think, and that it does, so I definitely see a lot of quality in this story. However, overall, I just really felt like the book was very ableist. I've got an entire book review up with a whole discussion on why I thought the book was ableist. If you want to know more, you can definitely check that out, but in short, I just felt like the book and Will himself were always portrayed that he existed only to better the life of the able-bodied character, and that is problematic. I'm not saying that's the only way to see it, but that is how I saw it, and that is why I rated it what I rated it. Next up, I read volumes 2, 3, and 4 of Miss Marvel. I'm just going to talk about all of these together, even though they had different ratings. When I read the first volume of this series last year, I just didn't like the villain and the plot, and I just still feel very meh about volume 2. I just did not like that villain and that storyline at all. I gave it 3 stars, but volume 3, I really, really liked it. I gave this one 5 stars. There was a love interest introduced in this one, and that's not why I liked it, but it gave Kamala kind of a different side to why she was doing what she was doing, and I always like that aspect of when a superhero has people that they care about, how does that affect how they can perform their job? And then with Volume 4, I went back to a 3-star rating for this one. It just seems like a lot of other Marvel Universe stuff is coming into play, and if you aren't well-versed in the rest of the Marvel comics, which I am not, I just feel like it's going to have less impact. I don't know that it stood very well on its own because I had no idea what was actually happening, the big threat in this. Where did that come from? I don't know. That was explained in somebody else's story at some other time. And at the end of this one, again, I'm left questioning, do I want to continue this series? But overall, I do want to say that I love Miss Marvel as a character. I love that she is a Pakistani American main character and she's a female superhero and a teenage one at that. She's just great. She just absolutely is fantastic and I would highly recommend this series for young girls. For young boys, it doesn't matter. This is going to be someone their age that talks about the, their generation, but Kamala is a really great role model and this series is highly appropriate for teen readers because there's no cursing, so I would definitely recommend this for young girls and boys to get into comics. Next this month I read another series I'm just going to talk about them all together again and that is the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. I read the last three books this month, The Mark of Athena, The House of Hades, and The Blood of Olympus. This is a YA slash maybe middle grade kind of fantasy series about Greek and Roman mythology. I really liked how the mythology came to life. I like this much better than the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series. I did post a full Heroes of Olympus series review if you want to know more of my thoughts. I listened to the entire series on audiobook and I really enjoyed that format and I thought it was really engaging. I had no problems with the final book. I thought it was very suited to the series and the story being told. And finally this month I reread The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. What you need to know about it is that psychics and treasure hunters trying to hunt down a lost king because if they find his resting place they'll be granted a wish. I first read The Raven Boys back in 2012 and I really liked it then. I gave it a four star rating at that time. Upon this reread I gave it five stars because now that I know where some things are going it has so much rereadability. I was picking up on things that I had forgotten and I really think that if you read this series a long time ago like as each book came out it is definitely worth a reread. You will pick up on a lot of the details. This is a character driven story so there's not a ton of action. At times it seems like not a lot is going on but then like too much is going on it is a really weird and different series, so it's definitely not going to be for everybody, but I would highly recommend it if you're looking for YA that is different and non-cliche. That's it for my March wrap-up. My April TBR should be up soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the comments. Bye!